This is the second in a series of short videos featuring Synology's 1621 Plus. In the first video, I showed you several of the more common features and specs, as well as how to install the hard drives. Today, we're gonna to get Disk Station Manager installed and set up the volume and storage pool. So let's switch cameras now and get the DS1621 Plus connected to power and to the network. We're just going to connect to one of the four gigabit LAN ports for now. And then we'll hit the power button in the front. And you can probably hear the fans kicked on. They're pretty loud initially, but then they tend to quiet down. Okay, so the 1621 Plus has booted up successfully. Let's go ahead now and go over to the browser window. I have find.synology.com typed into the address bar. Let's see if we could find the NAS on the local network. And it says searching for Synology devices. That's interesting now. It says no disk station found within LAN. Now I know it's connected to the same LAN as my computer. I'm going to refresh it and try it one more time. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to go into my router and look at the DHCP lease table. Let's see if we can find the address there. Synology NAS 50.205 and it was connected today. So that's gotta be it. So let's try finding the NAS using the IP address. There we go. Okay, so now we're at the welcome screen. We're at the setup page. Let's go ahead It found the 1621 plus. Let's go ahead and hit setup. The next step says install disk station manager and we're gonna install the latest DSM for new features and security fixes. So hopefully that'll be DSM seven. So let's go ahead and install now. We get the warning that all data on hard disks one, two, and three will be removed during the installation. Are you sure you want to proceed? And we're going to go ahead and enable, I understand all the data will be on the hard disks will be removed and click okay. And now it says installing disk station manager, your Synology NAS, will be ready in approximately 10 minutes. Please do not turn off the power during the procedure. If you're enjoying these types of videos, please go ahead and smash that like button. It just helps get my content out in front of more viewers. Now, let's get back to the video. Okay, so the 1621 Plus has gone through the software installation process and now it's been rebooted and we're at the welcome to DSM-7 screen. So we're going to go ahead, we can click on the blue, see what's new link, but we're just gonna go ahead and click on the blue start menu for now to get going with the configuration process. So the next screen is asking us to create an administrator account for the NAS. So we're going to go ahead. First thing we're going to do is give it a name. So I'm going to call it lab 1621. Let's go ahead and click on next. Select an update option for your Synology NAS. And the three choices are automatically install important DSM and package updates, which Synology recommends, automatically install the latest DSM and package updates, or notify me when DSM or package updates are available and I will install them manually. I just happen to be an advocate of doing my own manual upgrades. So for me, I'm going to choose the third option, but you need to choose what's best for you and your environment. With that said, let's go ahead and click on next. And it says here, create a Synology account to receive more benefits. I already have a Synology account. I'm not going to sign in right now. I'm just going to skip this step, but you can go ahead and create your Synology account at this point. So let's go ahead and say skip. Device analytics. Will we, we will collect device information and hardware configurations to improve our services and personalize your experience. And then it says, I agree to allow Synology to collect non-identical data identifiable data to help improve Synology services. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit submit. If you want to agree to that, you can. Okay, so the next step now is it wants us to create the storage pool and volume. So we will go ahead now and create that. So let's go ahead and create the storage pool and volume by clicking the blue start button. Configure storage pool properties. So now we have 
the option of selecting our RAID type. We have SHR, RAID 1, RAID 5, basic, just a bunch of disks, and RAID 0. So I'm just going to go with SHR for now, and we're going to leave the storage pool description. It's optional, and I'm going to go ahead and just leave that blank. Let's go ahead and click on Next. And then we're going to select the drives. There needs to be at least one drive to create a storage pool with the RAID type of SHR. So we're just going to select all three drives because we want all of them to be part of the storage pool. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on next. We're going to allocate volume capacity. We're going to enter the volume max and then click on next. We got to select the file system. Our choice is BTRFS which is Synology recommended or ext4. I like to use BDRFS because it allows me to do snapshot allocation. So we're going to go ahead and leave that as is and click on next. And it's just confirming our settings. You can see all the choices that we've made here. And we're going to go ahead and click on apply. We get the warning from Synology that all the data on the newly added drives will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? And we will say, okay. Okay, so now it's showing us here in the lower left hand corner of the screen that the system is healthy. These are the widgets right here. We can take a quick tour. I'm just going to close the quick tour for now. And it said you can go to DSM help later to learn more about the usage tips. We're just going to acknowledge that by saying OK. And you can see here now it's created the storage pool and volume and it's in the process of optimizing in the background. So we can go ahead and actually use the NAS, but this is going to take some time for it to finish the optimization. So while that's being done, let me tell you about what's going to happen in the third part of the series. And we're probably just going to go ahead in that video, in the next video, and get the 10 gig networking card installed, as well as the NVMe drives. And hopefully by that point, I'll have some new memory so we can do a memory upgrade as well. If the memory doesn't arrive by then, then we'll do that in a separate video. We'll see how it goes. So if you like this video, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of the other videos I have here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. And as always, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. And if you would like to help support the channel, there's links to the Patreon page and PayPal down in the video description.